I wrote a paper many years ago, ago called Design as a Verb, Design as a Noun. I'm interested in design as a verb in order to achieve design as a noun. There's always going to be a key role in design for observation, conception, intuition, invention, historic emulation, and ideology. That's from Hilary Putnam, whose son is married to my daughter, but he's Harvard's most famous philosopher. Every design has a vision, a strategy, tactics, and actions. The vision is why and what. Why are we doing this and what are we trying to do? The strategy is what and where. The tactics are where and how. And the actions are how and when. And the first, the first of these, the vision, the strategy, are probably generalizable. But the tactics and actions are unique to the place, to the time, to the people. The vision and strategy requires experience. Young people tend not to have it. The tactics and actions can be taught. Scale matters. And Galileo was right. Many devices which work on a small scale do not work on a large scale. There is no such thing as the design method. At this scale, to this scale, is where most designers work. I know people who work in a very tiny scale, or a large scale if you're technically correct. And I know people who work on nations and galaxies, but they're not people who call themselves designers. At this scale, the risk is very high of making a big mistake. You put the city in the wrong place, you can kill people. I'll give an example later in my talk. At this scale, the risk is low. I don't care if Mike has a Baroque garden and Ron has a modernist garden. I just don't care. The risk is small. It's their problem, not my problem. But if they poison my water, it's my problem also. And that involves what you're focusing on as a designer. At this scale, come on, time out. I hate these things. At this scale, because the risk is high, you have to focus on strategy. At this scale, because the risk is low, you can focus on details. And you spend your time that way. At this scale, the science and complexity are really important. They're less important here. But the public understanding is lower at this end, and it's very high at this end. A lot of people don't need architects, don't need designers. They're perfectly happy. All designs have to go through six questions, and more than once. I've written about this many times. It's the framework which I've used for 20 or 30 years. There are six questions. How should the landscape be described? in content, space, and time. This question is answered by representation models, which are the data upon which a study, a design, or research relies. How does the landscape operate? What are the functional and structural relationships among its elements? This is answered by process models that provide information for the several assessments that are the content of the study. The third question, is the current landscape working well? This question is answered by evaluation models, which are dependent upon the cultural knowledge of the decision-making stakeholders. Crowding is not the same in Arizona and Hong Kong. How might the landscape be altered, changed? By what policies and actions, where and when? This question is answered by the change models that will be tested in the research or the study or the design. By the way, Design is research. Make no mistake about it. This question is answered by the change models. These are also data as assumed for the future. 
and they have to be in the same lexicon as your data. What differences might the changes cause? This question is answered by impact models, which are the information produced by the process models under changed conditions, under the assumption that your design is built. And finally, how should the landscape be changed? And this question is answered by decision models, which, like the evaluation models, are dependent on the cultural knowledge of the stakeholders and responsible decision makers. In practice, those are representation, process, evaluation, change, impact decision models. And it's not linear. By no means is it linear. You start out by saying, where am I? What's going on? Who's in problems? What kind of changes are being talked about? Do they think it's going to be worse? And why do they want us here in the first place? It's the first set of tasks any designer does, meeting with people, meeting with clients, meeting with communities. You're trying to answer the question, why in hell am I here? Why do they want me? The second pass is, how are we going to do what we're supposed to think we're supposed to do? And it's the design of the design process that's the second pass. And frankly, it does not begin with data, and it doesn't begin with technology. Believe me, it doesn't begin with technology. It begins with understanding the decision-making process. How are they going to know if we are giving them a good design? And understanding the decision process is far more important than understanding the technology. The third pass-through is, let's do the project. Let's organize our data, do whatever we do, etc., etc., etc. And it's almost always the case that you're organizing information, building models, evaluation, change, which I'm going to focus on, comparing impacts, presenting a decision, and it's almost always no. Almost every design that I've ever heard of has feedback loops. It means you have to do some crazy things, get better data, get better consultants, reevaluate, redesign. We make our students redesign all the time. And eventually somebody says, you're finished. Time has run out. Money has run out. We need something. But in that process, you might change scale. And the change of scale goes through the process again. And it could be changed down or change up in scale. And eventually somebody says, yes, let's do it. They build your design, they implement your policy, they do whatever they're going to do, and the next generation who studies the same place is going to have your design as their input data. And time goes on. <laughs>